y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, if you're new here. Today I am sharing three amazing crock pot recipes that have been a favorite for me and Morgan this month. So let's go ahead and jump into the recipes. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It seriously supports my channel. And subscribe if you wanna stick around with me. Let's go ahead and jump into recipe number one. So you're gonna want um, a big like beef chuck roast. This one is about three pounds. Some potatoes, we're gonna dice those up. An onion, some carrots. You can use like really any shape. These were just easy, so that's what I grabbed. A beef stew packet. You can use beef broth or like make your own seasoning, but I'm lazy and this is what we're gonna do. Beef stew seasoning mix, three cups of water for that. Some garlic and some Worcestershire sauce. So let's go ahead and get prepping or chopping, chopping. Okay, first things first, I'm preheating a skillet. This is my Dutch oven. You can use really whatever you have. Cast iron would be good or any type of pan to about a high heat. We're gonna let that heat up while we're over here chopping our potatoes, which I washed and the beef and the onion. We're going to, um, well, the potatoes we're not really doing anything with yet, but the onion and the beef we're going to brown in the skillet. <laughs> I'm not a huge lover of crock pot recipes that involve like pre-cooking just because I feel like it defeats the purpose of like, I don't know, the crock pot to me is like dump and go, put everything in and you're done. Um, but there are like no recipes. I'm really not following recipe, but I always kind of click around and see what everybody else does. Pretty much none of them say to just dump everything in. All of them say to like pre-brown the meat. So that we are going to do along with some onion. Um, and yeah, I think we've covered the basics. Okay, now we can shop. So I've diced my potatoes just into bite-sized pieces and then I diced up my onion. I always like to do my onion pretty fine and we just used half of this yellow onion. So once I got that diced up, I went ahead and started on the meat. I wanted to do the meat last just to keep my cutting board um, you know, free of any raw meat or whatever. So I cut up my beef into bite-sized chunks and then we just got it cooking on the stove with a little bit of olive oil. Gave it a little sear and this stew, you guys, is delicious. I could eat it again right now. Once your beef is diced, go ahead and throw it in a medium high skillet and just brown it on all sides. I used a little olive oil to do this, seasoned it with salt and pepper, and then I threw it in the crock pot. I also sauteed down the onion. Really, you could do the beef and the onion probably together. I'm not sure why I didn't do it that way. Um, but you definitely can, again, just a little salt and pepper. Once the onion is translucent, I dumped that in my crock pot. And then I mixed up the beef stew seasoning with the water and the potatoes and carrots, and then just dumped that all in together so it was easier to stir because I knew the crock pot was going to be very full. Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. I feel like I want there to be just a little bit more starting liquid. So I'm just adding in a can of beef broth. You could do extra water and a little bouillon if you want or just some extra seasonings. But I think that looks a lot better. We've got it on high and we're gonna just let it cook for about seven to eight hours. Oh, and I did spray it beforehand, so that's what this is. That reminds me, I did spray it just so nothing, you know, sticks to the bottom. Okay, y'all, the stew is done. And oh my gosh. It's amazing, it cooked about seven hours. I did have to add a little flour slurry, so just flour, cool water, whisk it together, dump it in, let it go about another 30 minutes to an hour. I will say it's not as thick as I was hoping it would be, um, but I mean, it's delicious. The meat is so tender. It just falls apart in your mouth. It's not chewy at all. I'm so excited for this. So as um, always, the recipes will all be linked for you down below. Okay, so for this recipe, we are making a spaghetti squash. This, I get like grocery pickup, so I don't get to pick out my own produce. And this thing is a monster, I hope. If it's in my crock pot, I think I'm gonna cut it this way. Um, 
I think that's the only way it's going to work. So anyways, um, I'm going to, you're going to need like a jar and a half or two jars of sauce. I'm actually going to make my own sauce. So I have a diced onion right here. We're going to use some minced garlic, a little tomato paste, a big can of crushed peppers or crushed peppers, crushed tomatoes with basil. Honestly, I would do two of these. Um, if you're doing one just from scratch and then some fire roasted diced tomatoes, they can be regular diced, um, whatever you like. I just like the chunks of tomato. Um, but usually I would use two of the crushed, but we have about half of this big jar of Manjuni sauce left that we need to use up before it goes bad. So I'm going to just dump that in with this to kind of bulk it up. Um, but if I didn't have this, I would definitely use two of the crushed to make sure we have enough sauce. This was supposed to be the start of a dairy free week, but I didn't realize that I bought meatballs with mozzarella cheese, which is totally fine. Everything else is going to be dairy free. So it'll be kind of a, a half Z week and <laughs> we'll start next week. But, um, Anyways, we're going to use two packs of the chicken meatballs. I think you could just use one, but I'm using this as a lunch prep as well as a dinner tonight. So I want to make sure I have plenty of a protein. So I decided to do two full packages of that. So I'm going to start by just adding, um, you know, the onion to a pot with some olive oil, cooking that down until it's translucent. And then I'm going to add in the rest of my ingredients, make the sauce. Then we will start the spaghetti squash in the crock pot. Okay, also, what do we think of this camera angle? Because I just got a new tripod and I'm so excited. This doesn't have to sit on my counter anymore. We're gonna add in diced onion. So to this, I'm gonna add some salt, some pepper. Let those sweat out. So after I let the onions sweat out, I add garlic for just about the last minute and then I go ahead and add in all of the tomato products. So the crushed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, and the rest of that jar of pasta sauce that I had. I did add a little bit of water to that jar um, and just kind of shook it up to make sure I got everything, dumped that in, stirred it up, and then I started with some seasoning. I use this Cavender seasoning, you guys, on literally everything. Um, so I used that, some Italian seasoning, Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute, and some bay leaves. I ended up skipping the tomato paste altogether and it turned out to be perfect. Okay, once you get your squash cut in half, go ahead and take the seeds out, then layer in a little bit of sauce in the bottom of the pan. That's what Amanda suggests. This is actually a recipe from one of my best friends, Amanda. I will have the recipe linked for you from her blog down below. Then layer in your squash. I did have to cut one of mine in half because it did not fit just so I could get the crock pot to close. Okay, I cut mine down the middle of one side because I was worried because my crock pot wouldn't close and I think that it needs that like, you know, needs to be enclosed. So I did cut that in half, but now we're good to go and I'm gonna let this go on high um, for about three hours. I'm gonna add the meatballs and the sauce for the last hour. Okay, after about three hours, pull out your squash and use a fork to get out all of that spaghetti squash. It's so delicious and this is so easy to do. So once it's all in there, I added about half the sauce that I had left over, mixed it in with the spaghetti squash, topped it with meatballs, and then added the rest of the sauce on top. Let it cook for another hour to hour and a half. My meatballs are already fully cooked, um, but if yours aren't, just make sure that you cook them all the way through and you'll be good to go.
So as you can see, I used this recipe actually as a meal prep on this week, and it was so good leftover, you guys. This is a really good meal prep option. Add a little side salad if you want, but truly you've got tons of veggies, protein, and it is super delicious less left over. Even Morgan liked it, and he isn't a huge vegetable guy, so I call that a win. Okay, y'all, this is everything we're gonna need for red beans and rice. Obviously, you're gonna need rice, but you make it separately. I haven't pulled it out yet. Um, but three cans of red kidney beans. I'm using the no salt added kind, so I'm gonna add my own seasoning. Some andouille sausage. I believe the recipe called for an onion and like three or four stalks of celery. I'm just gonna use the seasoning blend because that's what we like and it's easy. A green bell pepper and then for seasoning we're gonna need salt chili powder minced garlic and some of this sauce i'm not even gonna try to say it <laughs> that's all you're gonna need so we're just gonna dump all this in a crock pot and let it cook up for about three hours serve it over um some rice super simple Once you have your sausage chopped up, I went ahead and started adding everything into my crock pot just to clear my cutting board. So the three cans of beans go in and you'll see I kind of am strategically placing everything. I really just wanted a good photo of everything in the crock pot. Um, you don't have to be so extra, just dump everything in. It's totally fine. Then get your pepper chopped up. This is a method that I learned on Food Network, but I just saw a new method last night, y'all, for pepper chopping. So stay tuned for future videos. Um, because I have a better, cooler pepper option, I think. So I'm excited to try that next time I cook. Okay, I'm sorry y'all, I said low. It's actually high for three and a half hours. It's looking good. Oh, or low for nine, as Morgan would say. <laughs> All right y'all, I've got my rice in here. I'm about to serve up. looking so good. I'm going to do a little extra juice. Go. I'm so excited to try it. Okay, y'all, it is so delicious. Morgan likes it too. It's so easy and it's really pretty inexpensive. Um I mean, yeah. Beans and rice are very inexpensive and then just a bell pepper and a little bit of sausage. It's really delicious. It would be good without the sausage as well. Honestly, this is a win. I think we're gonna keep it in our recipe binder. It's delicious. I'm a huge fan. So Morgan likes to put Tabasco on his. I think that sausage isn't very spicy, so I think I'm gonna add Cholula to mine. And yeah, we're just gonna enjoy dinner. I really hope you like this video. Give it a big thumbs up. That seriously supports my channel. It lets more people find my videos and I so appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stick around with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye y'all.